Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. So, this is a bit of an oddball. Um, I felt like delving into my backlog and picking out some of the weirder things I bought. And this guy is a private military contractor from Eureka Miniatures. A miniature of a contemporary era, weirdly enough. The PMC is pretty much a staple of most conflicts around the world these days, with them being employed by a variety of parties in the Middle East, and even uh, as far as, like, as line troops for Saudi Arabia right now in their current, well, hesitate to say war, but you know what I mean. PMCs tend to be um, ex-servicemen of various types, and as a result tend to have um, at least some military experience, so of course depending on the provider, you know, quality may vary. So the nationality will be a slight factor, as I am going to try to do some tattoo work with this miniature, which um, didn't turn out as well as I'd hoped, but nevertheless you'll get to see me attempt it. Anyway, um, so to start with, I've already prepared the miniature. I used some fairly crappy wooden bases I found, and just glued down some uh, the miniature itself, and put a layer of sand over it, just to give, you know, a, um, a texture to uh, to the base. After that I primed it white because I was largely out of grey. So at this stage I'm still trying to find the colours for this miniature mostly. Um, for, and because he's also part of a larger batch so I'm just experimenting with mostly Vallejo model colour colours as well just to you know use up some of that range. So to start with I painted the, opted to paint the trousers Luftwaffe blue and the shirt a uh, pale grey blue I believe and uh, one thing to note is that final colour for the cap will change. But yeah this stage is fairly simple just getting colour on the miniature and um, just getting a nice even coverage. The one good thing about Vallejo model colour paints is that the overall the range tends to cover very very well. Um, it doesn't, it's not particularly thin, it just goes on in one or two coats fairly easily. I'm generally in favour of it. Unfortunately the colour range is fairly limited and it mostly suits um, more serious military modelling rather than the more fantastical miniatures I tend to paint. Also just painting the uh, shoes. The in an interesting thing about these models is that they're all wearing trainers, so you can, it's definitely a departure from the usual, more realistic military type model where, you know, boots tend to be black or brown. You can actually um, use your imagination a bit, which sadly I didn't, as I was mostly just trying to figure out a way that would also translate to effective batch, an, an effective batch method. Oh, and I'm just also painting the belt black. Um, one good thing about this range is that the miniatures are weirdly detailed, though after picking through what miniatures I have got from Eureka Miniatures, the um, actual quality of the individual ranges I find tends to vary. And that's pretty much for the first base coat. Um, let's start some shading. So we'll use my um, like non-pre-made method for shading because I tend to like it more and more as I go on. It's a it's a much nicer finish I find than a lot of um, products from say GW or other providers. Anyway, so to start with, I'm getting my ever so slowly depleting bottle of Vallejo matte black, or just black as the as the color is, adding in a lot of glaze medium, and then um, a fair bit of water, and then I'm just about ready to give this guy his first wash. So you can see it coming out rather nicely and continuously adding water to the mixture. And as we go, we're going to test it on our paper towel until we get a very, very thin mix that instantly diffuses on the paper and then we'll apply it. So it's fairly simple. Just, you know, give it an even layer, make sure it's even out. Don't miss any spot, any spots. And then um, you have your shading. It also acts a bit like a filter. And if you're starting with, um, fairly bright colors, which I am, it darkens them, darkens them down a bit, which will it'll, which will be great for when we go back and do our um, relayering and highlighting. Anyway, this stage is dead simple and we'll do other shading passes for a different batches of color. Um, I'm mostly painting things that are 
shaded black right now. Um, that was the current plan, and we'll come back and do the shading for other colors later in separate batches, and of course using more precise brush, precise brush strokes. Again, starting with the most internal point points of the model and the largest surface areas, if we as we if we can. Okay, now we'll go back and relayer our colors. So the black, of course, has done a number on our initial um, sh uh, color. So we just need to reestablish the midtone by giving the colors another layer of, of the very thinned out midtone color. So yeah, I'm also going to try and blend this a little bit into the crevices, but leaving the very deepest parts of the crevices the same color to try and um, get that transition from, from dark to light going. Well, as best we can at any rate. Um, since again, I'm not painting too much for quality, I'm mostly painting for a decent tabletop standard. Um, it'll do, basically. Um, won't win any awards, but it'll look good on the tabletop. So now that we've finished our relayering of the um, midtones for the black shaded colors, I'm going to work on the brown shaded colors now to start with. Um, I am going to keep a fairly consistent scheme across the range of associated miniatures, and the color I'm going to use for the belt kit and any other th and the holsters and uh, plate carriers and any other bits and pieces that I feel are a bit military, I'm going to use a Russian uniform World War II from the Vallejo model color range, of course. So fairly generic, I'm not trying to be fancy or do any uh, fancy camo. I have to say, I have got a box of um, 2014-era um, American Marines, and I am really not looking forward to trying to paint the digital camo pattern on them. It's going to be hell. I'm going to have to do some research as to figure out a decent way And the final color we are going to use is uh, green brown, and we're also going to paint. We're going to use this well at the moment for the hat, but that'll change later on. And we're going to paint the gloves um, green brown. So for any of the other miniatures that are wearing gloves, I'm also going to use this color because you know um, it's like a unit, but not. And I do not want to really have to um, spend make. make f I don't do not want to have to work out too much variance within the actual. Um, batch of miniatures. This is just my first test one, just to figure out a method and get a scheme going. Anyway. Alright, so finally I'm going to go back and repaint the cap black, mostly because I ran out of ideas and I just wanted to just get it done and also experiment a bit with, you know, shading, highlighting black. It's something I'm Especially if it's a flat black, it, my usual method is a lot more detailed than this. I wanted to try something a bit more, a bit more basic, I suppose. And finally, we'll get on to shading all of the um, green and greens and browns and golds and whatever. Um, so same deal with us with the black, except our shade color is um, burnt umber, I believe, and we're going to mix it up the same way as we did with the um, with the black. Just you know, some a small amount of color, a lot of glaze medium, and some water, and that's your homemade shade. Well, homemade aside from the glaze medium, but that's another story. I suppose the one disadvantage about this method of shading is that it takes a long time to dry. So I try to time it so it's the last thing I do overnight. So by the time I come back um, from work the next day, I've got a fully dried model ready for the next stage of painting. And again, just like with the um, 
The black shaded colors we're going to relayer with the browns and greens. So if I wanted to take this to another level, what I might do is even try to paint a camo pattern on the um, plate carrier holster. Like a good source of inspiration for a lot of this stuff is, of course, you know, looking at photos of actual soldiers, uh, but also of um, catalogs, especially for surplus stores um, and the sheer variety of mil spec garbage that is marketed to, um, well, wannabes, quite frankly of which I am, um, shamefully admit, kind of th think it's cool, but, you know, I'm a huge idiot war nerd anyway, and you shouldn't take anything I say seriously. But that's another story. So it looks like I've commenced highlighting now. Um, generally, for the highlighting, all I really needed to do was, um, in the case of the black shaded colors and the like the non greens and brown based tones is I just mixed a bit of white in with the base color um, and just gave it a highlight there. So in this case on the shirt, just pick out the very folded um, uh, the pinches and creases um, and same thing for the trousers. Also emphasizing the shape of the body, such as the knees and the buttocks as well. I So I find that it, you can afford to be a little um, less aggressive with your highlighting for a lot of these miniatures as you're not really necessarily going for competition standards. If you're painting up something like this, odds are it's just for an actual war game down the line. So yeah, just, you know, keep the highlights, you know, more of a realistic kind of um, tone rather than like going the full um, pro painter, like four colors for a highlight. Um, that way lies madness and quite frankly in a lot of cases the quality of the miniature is not even really up to carrying that sort of paintwork anyway. So to shade the brown colors I used a similar method to the um, black shaded colors. I um, mixed in some Vallejo model color buff which is a really creamy yellow white to the base to the base color and just gave it um usual edge highlighting on the uh, belt carrier all of the like exposed divots and edges on, and also on the gloves um it's a fairly simple process so um yeah not much to say about it other than you've probably heard me talk about how to do it um a bunch of times already So um, one lesson that I should really actually learn one of these days is um, make sure you clean up your mold lines. Um, only, there's a honking great mold line on his left leg that I forgot to clean up and even with the paint job and trying to conceal it that way it's still visible. So a little bit of preparation causes you to like not have to either live with an obvious mold line or redo a lot of work down the line. But I didn't really mind. Um, guess he's going to be part of a unit anyway and I want to get these things off my painting table. There's so many. And finally we'll pick out the fingers in the gloves and the edges on the gloves. Simple process. You see me do it a dozen times before. Finally, for the hat, I just used some black grey mixed in with black and then just gradually build up a slightly lighter tone of black around the brim of the cap and on the crown of the cap. So just keep working this. I'm not really doing um, edge highlights anywhere except on the very brim of the cat and that's, I think, a cat cap. And I think that was just in pure uh, neutral grey. As it's the sharpest edge on the entire thing, that's the place where the starkest highlight should go. Of course, for fabrics, you don't want to take your highlights up too far, otherwise they start to look gloss. Um, you just take a look at how um, you'd actually highlight a leather commissar's coat or any other leather miniature, a uh, leather clad miniature you can think of. All right, at long last we are onto the flesh. So 
I'm using a bit of a different uh, method from my usual. Um, since I'm sticking with all my Vallejo model color colors, I've started with um, Vallejo model color flat flesh. Now again, this will take at least two to three coats just to get it even over the entire model. So let's get through it till we're just about ready to start shading this guy. All right, so we're gonna, this is a point where I will try to get a bit experimental and experiment with the shades. I will say my first attempt at a shade color didn't work out. So I went back and um, did it a bit more judiciously in a subsequent pass. So just be aware that's coming up. So to start with, I tried to just get the, um, get a shade flesh color mixed with brown rose and, you know, make up my usual wash. Uh, same process as before, but this time around, I didn't think it worked worked out particularly well. So uh, while it was still drying, I went back and redid it. We'll skip forward to that in a second. So what I'm going to do is use a similar mixture, the flesh base with some shadow flesh mixed into it to get a very, very um, dark shade going and just put paint that straight over the current um, shade as it's drying. Uh, mix it in there and just let it go overnight and then uh, we have, we'll be ready to actually start relayering it uh, once it dries in the morning or rather the next afternoon after I'm home uh, after I came home from work you know the deal okay now relayering same as everything else um, just leave the deepest recesses in the shade color, emphasize the nose, chin, and cheeks. I will say though, the um, the sculpting on the face wasn't particularly strong, so I had to try and um, uh, pick up the slack with my paint job to um, actually paint the raised surfaces and textures with my brush. As usual, uh, keep the paint thin because you want to try and get that transition going. So again, um, just further reinforcing those highlights um, with the um, highlight flesh. Also just painting in a few striations where I can, emphasizing the um, elbow and other very sharp edges. And then we'll uh, move on to some of the facial features, I believe. So the eyes were done just with Vallejo off-white carefully painted into the socket. So my usual technique for this. I found the eyes on this one particularly difficult to get to, mostly because of the flat brim cap and the, um, well, the quality of the sculpt. What am I doing there? I do not remember what I did. Oh yeah, I think I'm reshading parts of it, um, just because I had some trouble emphasizing the eyes correctly. Or, yeah, also, just also applying some additional shade on parts of the face where I thought it um, needed it. Anyway, um, see, so yeah, that's the thing. Um, there is really no prescribed me method for painting. It's the longer I do this, the more it becomes uh, just a back and forth until I feel a particular part of the miniature is is done or just right. Um, that's the thing a lot of the Games Workshop videos do is they prescribe a method, whereas while at the same time you have to also develop an eye for it, unfortunately, as much as a in a way that's a pretty patronizing thing to say, but unfortunately it is the truth. So moving on, uh, the eyes, I'm just going to do a couple of dots of German gray. And then what I'll do is I'll do a bit of a back and forth just to reshape the eyes and get the pupils pointing exactly where I want them. Um, you also notice that the um, M4 carbine or I don't know, equivalent, it's made under a variety of brand names. You'll be completely unsurprised to find out um, if you aren't already a gun nerd like I am, um, is being painted separately because um, it's I'm going to use some metallics, even though it's largely, uh, well, black because, you know, black rifle. Um, and I want to save that to last in order to avoid contaminating my paint. But anyway, that's pretty much that. 
I'm going to keep working away at the eyes until I feel they are done to a sufficient degree. Alright, so this is a bit of an experiment I tried with contrast just to see if I could get it to behave in a way which would be useful for doing tattoos. So my eyesight's pretty bad and this was a bit of a rush job so it didn't turn out as well as I'd hoped. I was aiming to, well, fictionally I was trying to make this guy a former US Marine so one thing that US Marines are known for are their fucking ghastly motivational tattoos with things like, you know, the Navy, um, the Marine Eagle anchor and Ver lots of variations of it, some more offensive or quite frankly culty than others. Um, yeah, so I just was trying to do a simple um, globe, eagle, and anchor, and the uh, letters USMC under on the um, underneath it all on the uh, forearm. But I, I found it hard to get that shape, and in retrospect, I probably should have stuck with simpler things, which were easier to sketch. Only an actual artist probably can uh, pull off such a move, especially on a miniature like this, and at this scale. So, failed experiment. No big deal. Um, never know until you try. So for the hair, I'm aiming for more of a reddish auburn colour. So I do believe that it was some kind of um, reddish brown, maybe hull red, I don't remember the exact colour. And another effect I tried to do was a stubble, so since this guy's a redhead, presumably would have red stubble. So what I did is I mixed up a thin glaze, a very thin glaze, I did a couple of passes on it on the cheeks to try and get that impression of a slight red tint to the cheeks, as if his stubble is slowly growing back. So some final touch-ups with the black, and I'm going to make a start on the black rifle itself. So to start with the actual black plastic components, we get a layer of black and um, of actual Valeria model color black. Now those are the buttstock and the hat foregrip. The rest of the model is a um, a, a blue uh, metal basically. I'm also going to quickly highlight the plastic with some neutral grey and now since the plastic is generally a little bit glossy that's why I went for a more obvious highlight in this case. And I also decided to quickly put a shade on that black to just tamp down on the um, contrast to make it blend with the base colour. Uh, that is a shade on the, um, the black plastic furniture on the black rifle. So for the actual receiver, barrel, and um, other actual main body components of the rifle, I chose to mix some black with some um, Vallejo model color gunmetal gray. So nothing fancy about it, just give it um, any, a single even coat should suffice, um, and um, if it's uneven in a few places just neaten up. Now the magazine itself is a different shade of metal. This one I believe I just used natural steel since um, if you look at most um, pictures of M4s in real life you'll notice that um, the, ma the magazine is often a different um, shade or finish than the um, rifle itself. Um, just simple un unadorned like stainless steel is ten seems to be what it looks like so that's what I went with. And for a final flourish, and not filmed unfortunately, I gave the entire, all of the metal components, including the stainless steel magazine and the um, receiver and barrel itself, a, a layer of the um, same black wash that I used for both the undercoat um, shading the uh, shirt and trousers and all of the other, you know, generally non-brown colours, um, and just left it at that. Also picked out a few very fine edge highlights um, on, the, on the actual rifle itself. 
So that's pretty much it. I painted the base separately to get more of a desert scheme going, so let's go on to the final review. So in spite of um, all my complaining, I think he turned out pretty well. He's definitely a good gaming piece, and he's got a whole bunch of comrades coming up the line to back him up soon. Um, so yeah, ready to expand the interests of um, whoever pays them, basically. Um, yay, war and capitalism. The synthesis of two great flavors together at last. So that's pretty much it. Overall, I have to say I'm digging these modern ranges of miniatures from Eureka uh, Miniatures. Um, they do vary in quality, though. Like the Marines and Insurgents I've got from um, the same manufacturer are of similar quality to this guy, but the um, the Australian riflemen don't seem to be as good in terms of quality. Um, See, so yeah, one of the reasons I bought these and some insurgents to go with them is because I wanted to make my own um, little modern skirmish game at some point down the line. And um, these miniatures seem like a really, really good fit, especially just for, you know, small firefights between small groups of um, combatants. That's the kind of, um, almost like XCOM, but for the tabletop. That's something I'd like to see made in future. Something fast playing and punchy, but not, um, not a slog. We'll see how that works anyway. So that is pretty much it. I love excuses to get into all of the weirder things in my backlog, um, and I hope to have more of it for you soon. I also might have to pay the website of Eureka Miniatures another visit, or check them out when, when they're in CanCon next, which is, you know, next year, so I better pace myself. I've got enough to paint as it is. Anyway, um, if you feel like liking and sharing or subscribing, go ahead. I don't really benefit from it because, you know, the hell with YouTube and their attempt to... Um, basically monopolize the streaming platform. So yeah, I'll catch you all later. Bye-bye.